Welcome to Catching Up with Vet Candy, where we're revolutionizing the way you see veterinary medicine. From groundbreaking discoveries to inspiring stories, we're here to empower the future of animal health. I'm Dr. Alon Armstrong. And I'm Dr. Shannon Gregoire. Today, we're bringing you the stories that are shaping the veterinary world. So get ready to be inspired because we have the hottest news for you. This show is brought to you by Zoetis. A recent CDC report has confirmed that two indoor pet cats in Michigan developed severe neurological signs and died from highly pathogenic avian influenza, H5N1. The two cats, a five-year-old domestic short hair and a six-month-old Maine Coon, belonged to dairy farm workers but lived exclusively indoors. Both cats developed progressive neurological signs, facial swelling, anorexia, and ataxia with rapid clinical decline. Despite supportive care, both died or were euthanized within days. Genetic sequencing confirmed the virus strain was clade 2344B, genotype B313, the same circulating in dairy cattle across multiple states. While previous feline H5N1 cases have been linked to ingestion of infected birds or raw pet food, these cats had no known direct contact with infected livestock. The owners, however, worked closely with H5N1 positive dairy cattle and may have brought the virus home through contaminated clothing, footwear, or unpasteurized milk. Neither farm worker wore personal protective equipment, PPE, on the job, and both declined testing for influenza A. One had been splashed in the eyes with unpasteurized milk shortly before their cat's illness. Additionally, 24 veterinary staff members were exposed to the sick cats, with seven reporting symptoms such as nasal congestion and headaches. Those tested were negative for influenza A, but the incident highlights the importance of infection control protocols in veterinary settings. What are the key considerations for veterinarians? These cases underscore the need for vigilance in veterinary practice, particularly when evaluating cats with neurological or respiratory signs in regions affected by H5N1 outbreaks. Consider PPE use when handling ill cats. Obtain occupational histories from pet owners to assess risk of exposure. Educate farm worker clients on biosecurity measures, including changing clothing and footwear before entering the home. Avoid raw pet food diets, which have previously been linked to H5N1 transmission in cats. Monitor evolving H5N1 research on fomite and environmental transmission risks. The exact mode of transmission in these cases remains uncertain, but the findings suggest that fomite transmission or exposure to contaminated dairy products could be a viable route for H5N1 infection in pets. Given the ongoing outbreaks in dairy cattle, poultry, and wildlife, continued research and strict biosecurity measures are critical to preventing further spread. I'm Dr. Wailani Sung, a board-certified veterinary behaviorist and owner of Bay Area Vet Behavior. Today, I want to talk to you about how cats mask pain with behavior. Cats are adept at concealing their discomfort, posing a challenge for even the most attentive owners to detect subtle signs of pain. Unlike dogs, cats typically do not exhibit overt physical signs of osteoarthritis pain, such as limping. Instead, they manifest behavioral changes that are frequently mistaken for age-related issues. Decreased agility, reduced mobility, and alterations in grooming habits are commonly reported signs of feline osteoarthritis, or OA. However, these subtle cues can easily go unnoticed, leading to underdiagnosis and undertreatment. Understanding and recognizing these behaviors is crucial in differentiating pain from behavioral issues in cats. Feline osteoarthritis often remains hidden with cats masking their pain instinctively. With over 60% of cats over the age of six and a staggering 90% of cats over 12 affected by OA, this debilitating condition's prevalence cannot be ignored. However, diagnosing feline OA presents a significant challenge primarily due to the cat's adeptness at concealing their discomfort. 
Several factors contribute to this challenge, including fewer veterinary visits for cats compared to dogs and low owner awareness of cat-specific pain behavior. Additionally, the elusive nature of feline pain and the difficulty in assessing cat's locomotion during exams further complicate diagnosis. Overcoming these barriers require a proactive approach to screen cats for osteoarthritis pain during annual veterinary exams. Good news! You can screen your patients with the Zoetis Feline OA Pain Checklist, which offers a comprehensive tool for assessing feline OA pain. With six key behavior areas and 14 simple data points, clients can easily recognize their cat's daily life patterns. The checklist prompts clients to assess their cat's difficulty with normal physical actions, such as jumping and running, and score their cat's health and behavior across vital categories. By implementing this checklist during adult feline exams, veterinarians can engage clients and drive awareness of feline OA pain. Low scores on emotional well-being or vitality can alert the veterinary team to underlying discomfort previously attributed to laziness or old age. Feline pain is a significant yet often overlooked health concern in cats. By recognizing subtle behavioral changes and implementing systematic screening methods during annual exams, veterinarians can improve the early detection and management of OA pain in cats. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. So that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for watching. Want to keep up with the latest? Follow us at MyVetCandy. Bye. Bye.